Okay, let's get spicy here. My name is Doragon, and I'm going to hit you with some of my biggest cloud gaming hot takes in this video. So I need you to hit me back with yours in the comments section below. But you came here for spicy, right? So here we go. No one is doing it right. For me, to be classed as doing it right, your service needs to essentially offer the same service as a home console in the cloud, accessible on any existing device. No one currently offers all of the biggest third-party games, and even less have exclusive content. For cloud gaming to be adopted by more than just the enthusiasts, which, as a demographic, is already at saturation, services need to offer a Switch, Xbox, or PlayStation experience that users can play on their PC, phone, television, even older consoles like a PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360. And don't forget devices like Vita, DS, Steam Deck, and Shield TV. There are so many caveats to cloud gaming in 2023, such as specific hardware, networks, subscription fees, playtimes, queues, and so on, that no one outside of the hardcore is willing to or capable of adopting it. And this lack of a parity user experience is top of that list. But speaking of caveats, if your service only works on 5 GHz networks, you have no right trading at all. I'm prepared for all of the hate on this one, but hear me out. Cloud gaming services are currently vying for the attention of around 20 million people worldwide, and it is the same 20 million people that every service is trying to get to sign up. They aren't growing, and they aren't enticing more gamers over from traditional gaming means. There are at least 150 million console gamers in the world, judging by last generation sales, and around the same in PC gamers. But there's over 2 billion daily mobile gamers. There's definitely an audience to tap into. So why isn't it working? The answer is laziness, a lack of investment, and putting the root cause of value of the service upon the paying customer. Every video I have ever made about GeForce Now has comments on it along the lines of, oh, well, of course it isn't working well, idiot, you are on Wi-Fi. Or, this dude on 2.4 gigahertz, what a joke, immediately ignored. The thing is, that use case is the reality of those 2 billion mobile users, of those 260 million console and PC gamers. They're just going to use the network they're on without adjustment. Because for the most part, they don't know how to adjust it. But more importantly, the rest of the entertainment industry has shown them that they don't need to adjust it to access music, video, books, and podcasts at full quality, wherever, whenever, with any form of internet connection. Yet testing as one of those end users, I've had Boosteroid and Luna tell me directly in app that I should be using a 5 GHz network and Ethernet instead of anything else, despite advertisements stating a great experience regardless of connection. I can get 4K HDR Netflix on 4G mobile data, but xCloud refuses to start on such a connection. The providers need to work hard to offer a parity experience to the rest of the entertainment industry meaning flawless cloud gaming on Wi-Fi, 2.4 GHz, and mobile data. Otherwise, cloud gaming will only ever be as big as it is, or as good as it currently is. But it does face a far bigger challenge than just working as people expect. That challenge is that remote play is better than cloud. Most cloud gaming services do not try to replace your existing console or PC anymore. For the very simple reason, they can't. So they act more as a complementary service to the core console or PC experience. And as far as complementary services go, cloud gaming gets absolutely decimated by remote play. PS Plus Premium, for example, does not let me play God of War 2018 on my phone, because there's no mobile app for the service. But remote play will let me do that, whether I own the game or claim it from PS Plus Extra. The medium? a launch window exclusive to Xbox Series consoles, is not available to play on Xbox Cloud Gaming. But link that console to your phone, tab, or PC via Remote Play, and that owned or claimed title is available to play away from the console. Call of Duty Warzone, a free-to-play game on PC, 
isn't available to play via GeForce Now. But install that on your PC and use Steam Link or Moonlight on any supported device, and you're winning Battle Royale games on the bus to work. So they have more available games, so what? The thing is, they have all available games. Want a new one? Browse the platform store and buy it on the Remote Play app. Or select from a multitude of free or inclusive titles depending on the platform and subscription. No need to worry about compatibility with your remote service. As long as they aren't VR or AR titles, they're going to work on Remote Play. These services offer touch controls for every single game, meaning no additional hardware is required at all, and that compatibility is far higher and greater than any cloud gaming service. But if you do connect up something like this Backbone 1 controller, you've suddenly got a Switch-like console for your platform of choice. And just to top this, Remote Play is better than Cloud section off, all Remote Play applications, regardless of platform, are completely free of charge and available in every single country in the world. Unlike every single cloud gaming service. Okay, let's start to bring the spice up. But before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you're enjoying this video. It helps me out massively. Now, my next hot take is that bring your own services a low-effort, money-making scams. That's right, I said scam. To the enthusiasts watching this video, tell me, what was the general public's biggest misconception about Google Stadia during its lifetime? If you said you need to have a subscription fee to play the games that you also have to pay for, you would indeed be correct. So when we have a multitude of services like GeForce Now, Boosteroid, Nware, NetBoom, Parsec and more, all offering a service where you actually do need to pay a subscription fee as well as pay for the games to play on that subscription fee, I'm calling the scam out. Because it is far worse than that. To operate as one of these services, you need some server space, which can be obtained for around three to five hundred pounds a year, and some decent-ish PCs that talk to that server to relay the games and input signals back and forth. It's an oversimplification I'm aware, but not the hardest thing to do. Then you charge each user around £15 a month for them to do all of the work to make your service actually have value. And in this model, you are in profit with around 50 subscribers and a year of operation. You send them to another site to purchase the game so you have no running or hosting fees. Most of the time, you don't draw up legal deals with the game's creators because that'd be more overheads. So play of said games on your setup without impact to players is questionable. So players end up getting banned by anti-cheat systems. But you can wash your hands of it because it's not your concern, not your terms and conditions, which when reading, show they were drawn up in chocolate milkshake on a napkin. No matter how hard you shout, you cannot convince me that this setup is a good deal. Pay a subscription fee that gets you access. That's like paying to get into Alton Towers, but then every ride having a premium price tag to actually go on it. But you can't pay that price tag at the ride. You have to go to the Liver Building in Liverpool and pay them to ride, then go back to Alton Towers to actually go on the ride you want. It's dumb, it's lazy, and it's a scam. Alright, after that, Let's bring it down a notch. I think that every service should have a mobile application. I hope this one speaks for itself, but just in case it doesn't. Cloud gaming is sold as a way to untether yourself from a single gaming location. PlayStation, however, don't really allow this as their cloud services are only available on their consoles and Windows PCs. Stadia, a Google company, took two years to get a working Stadia app on the entirety of Android a Google-owned mobile platform. GeForce Now and Xbox Cloud cannot work on iOS. This is mostly down to Apple's idiotic App Store policies, but even the web apps on iOS for these services are not good. Xbox crowed, rather falsely we should state, about bringing Call of Duty to 150 million more gamers with the Activision Blizzard deal. While this was a fallacy on Xbox's part, it should be the goal of cloud gaming. 
but Boosteroid only became available natively on Android, the platform with a worldwide 80% market share of all mobile phones, in early 2023. And it still doesn't properly work. 2 billion daily mobile gamers. Give them an app that works superbly on high latency networks and watch the users roll in. Okay, deep breath. We're on to my final hot take for this video, and it's a bit volcanic, so prepare yourself. GeForce Now is terrible. I've already covered part of this in the Bring Your Own Services Are Scams section, which GeForce Now is part of. But looking deeper, most of the positive reviews of this service come from ambassadors or sponsorships, which means these people are getting paid to say these good things about GeForce Now. For everyone else, just because GeForce Now is the best in-game performance at this moment in time doesn't mean that it is good full stop. It means the industry needs to grow up. I started trying to use GeForce Now in 2020. I had an advert pop up on my Google feed saying, play PC games on your phone. So I signed up as I had no other way of playing PC titles. I was on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra at the time, the most up-to-date phone in the world in that moment. And I got access 12 months later for a more expensive price. Such a poor first impression is hard to shift, don't get me wrong. But GeForce Now then let me down at every turn, and I'm far from the only person to experience it. The free tier was, and is, heavily caveated. Cues to get in, 720p visuals, one hour play sessions. It was obviously designed to give you a taste of the service and prompt you to sign up for more. But the feeling of that level of access turns people off more than entices them in. These limitations annoy the user and convince them to take their money elsewhere. The priority tier doesn't do much above the free tier. I still queued to access games on priority as recently as February 2023, which is the last time that I was subscribed. I got 1080p visual, sure, and 6 hour play sessions which was great, but £8.99 per month doesn't seem like a worthy transaction for just playing a bit longer and on a phone screen, barely perceptible improved visuals. The user interface is horizontal and has been since 2021. Basic UI design says put things vertical due to input methods across all platforms that GeForce Now is available on. Yet here we are still going sideways in 2023. Only in June 2023 did Nvidia add an option in the Android app to see a list of all available games. Three years to add another really basic user interface and user experience element. GeForce Now has only been working on mobile browsers such as Chrome and Opera since June 2023, despite Safari usage availability since November 2021. But Samsung's stock web browser cannot access GeForce Now, nor can Edge, Sony, Motorola, Firefox, any other browser really. Users would like to use the website to overcome the app limitations, but when it's not offered parity, especially across Chromium browsers, at any sort of usable pace, it's further driving people away. It is parroted to me regularly that the ultimate subscription solves everything that I'm complaining about. But it won't sort that browser issue, will it? Nor that terrible user interface user experience design. Let's not forget that ultimate costs £17.99 per month. And for that price, on my devices, I get the exact same service as the priority tier. I'm meant to get 120 frames per second on mobile on the ultimate tier. But on the 3080 and 4080 incarnations of it, I've only ever gotten 60 frames per second at 1080p, despite having 120Hz Quad HD screens on all the devices I'm using the service on. Ray tracing just slows the game down, DLSS 3 doesn't make a jot of difference at 60 frames per second, and again, on Android, reflex mode can't be turned on. It's undelivered promise after undelivered promise. And I can only talk from my personal experiences. I'm not in anybody else's position to get a different idea on this. But given the sales pitch and three years of failures that I've experienced, I can only conclude that GeForce Now is terrible. Phew! We got through it, folks. Now, I don't know about you, but I was equal parts excited and terrified about making this video. How did you feel watching it? And were your hot takes as spicy as mine? Or did you take the spice level up even further? I look forward to reading them in the comments. 
In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you've enjoyed this content, why not try this video where I rank top cloud gaming services for mid-2023? And until next time, folks, have yourselves a fantastic day. And take care.